All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. 9.16 p.m., that's California time. May 10th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a 3.0 earthquake here across California. It looks like around my neck of the woods. I live just outside of Chico here, and I did not feel it. About 13 miles deep underneath this area. More than likely, that's going to be associated with the strain out here along the Cascadia. Trimmer activity uh, is probably elevated. Let's see, is this today's map? Yes, it is. 612 epicenters of trimmer. And that's starting to fill in quite nicely there across the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, not so much on the northern part, but this area right here. Uh, looking at uh, some amplification going on there. Keep an eye on the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, this is not volcanic activity, but trimmer being reported or recorded down there into the deeper areas of the subduction. And this is a sign here that the, uh, the Juan de Fuca plate is trying to push further and further underneath the North American plate. And, of course, when that happens, when we get elevated trimmer, that tends to stir things up at the surface and also see these little quakes here. Uh, there across the uh, northern california region this one's a little down but it can still have some effects uh, on the um, earthquake activity that takes place here but uh, obviously when we get the trimmer activity it's adding further strain across the locked region of the cascadia so gotta watch that closely here that's actually a decent amount of trimmer activity 612 epicenters uh, when you put that in the last week here that brings up a total tally of uh, just over 1400 epicenters most of that down here across the southern end of the cascadia now occasionally we'll see a little bit extend uh, at the northern sacramento valley here a little bit north of chico but uh, either way that's still a considerable amount and uh, mainly focused down here across that southern end with some more recent trimmer activity being reported uh, up north around olympia and seattle area as uh, far as earthquake activity goes up there, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot happening there. And no quake activity to report across the area for now. I had a few folks asking me about that volcano offshore off the coast of Oregon. I know a lot of the big-time news agencies are covering it. Um, it's just a submarine volcano. And, um, you know, having a little bit of inflation and whatnot. We'll cover that a little bit later maybe tomorrow but it's not that big of a deal and i say that because the last couple eruptions was back in 2011 2015 you guys probably never even heard about it right it doesn't create a catastrophic tsunami it's not a super volcano underneath the ocean that would obviously be a big time deal but this is just a submarine volcano off the coast there of oregon by 300 miles or so and uh it's swelling and uh, could be getting ready to uh, erupt a little bit but uh, no threats out here across the area. Just going to stay confined to the uh, oceanic floor. All right, uh, but we'll cover that a little bit later tomorrow. Uh, Bay Area, pretty quiet. One or two earthquakes here early this morning. Nothing new to report uh, for now. Southern California looking a little spotty down here. Uh, although just within the last hour, a couple earthquakes here just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, nothing above 2.5. We got one earthquake down here south of the border uh, for a 3.1 earlier this evening, but uh, looks a little quiet down here. Gonna have to watch that. Things uh, obviously not gonna stay quiet for long. Oil fields still getting hit out here in, in the uh, Oklahoma area, and there's that uh, a decent shaker out there around Greenback, Tennessee this morning. Six o'clock local time, so that was probably, uh, what, nine o'clock Eastern? I think they're in Eastern. Um, a lot of videos popping up there on social media of this uh, quake. Uh, obviously, Great Smoky Mountains range. Uh, there's a lot of older fault systems out here, a lot of ancient fault systems. And these earthquakes, uh, intraplate earthquakes, uh, can happen from time to time. The largest out here in this region, historically, was like a 4.6, 4.7 back in 1918, I believe. Uh, but, hey, these earthquakes occur, and these uh, older fault systems here have been waking up a little bit. Uh, a lot up here across Oakland, the uh, Ohio area. As you can see, there's you know pretty much a trail of quakes leading out here across this uh, older uh, Appalachian Mountains here. And ultimately hitting the oil fields out here across Texas and Oklahoma. Um, 
Ohio's kind of out of the zone for earthquake activity, but they've been getting a number of them. And come to find out, there is some oil fields out here uh, where these earthquakes struck at least one of them. And some people say there's more out here, but there's a, some type of oil, uh, oil holding tank pad. And that would explain the earthquake activity out here. The strain, right? I don't believe that's fault related, but just it's possible it could activate some faults, older faults out there. But uh, wherever these oil fields are, it seems like uh, the strain of the uh, pressure out here on the North American plate with it on the move has uh, really been producing a lot of earthquakes across the oil field. So uh, continue to watch that. Around that four-pointer that struck this morning, uh, there was a number of twos out here up and down the board. Uh, nothing big, but got to remember here, these are some older ancient faults. And um, they do like to stir up once in a while. The area we need to watch here, obviously, is the New Madrid Seismic Zone. That's been somewhat active as well. Here's the last 30 days. That's 20 earthquakes of various magnitudes. Uh, the 2.8 there is going to be the largest one in the last 30 days this area can produce big earthquakes much bigger than a four-pointer we're talking mid to upper seven magnitude earthquakes and the last series of events was back in 1811 1812 well over 200 years there of, of uh, some strain building up so watch that there's obviously you know some concern that we could be seeing that here soon as well uh just got to be prepared yellowstone nothing showing up there um, let me double check though and make sure of that because we got the North American plate on the move and uh, there's some those look like uh, thunderstorms kicked off here in the darker blue there's some earthquake activity there highlighted in the red little marks here but it, it looks like there was some thunderstorms out there throughout the day today we'll double check that just to make sure um, we can go back here. Um, how far can we go back? 48 minutes ago? Oh, no. Let's go about six hours or so ago. Yeah, see, there's Yellowstone's up here. Looks like there was a line of thunderstorms moving into the Yellowstone area. Lots of lightning strikes all over. So the rumble, the thunder, that will show up on the seismograph stations out there to the ones that are exposed to the elements. So not all of them, but, yeah, that's uh, what thunderstorms will do out there. We see it a lot in the summertime. Uh, during those evening uh, pop-up showers and thunderstorms. But far as earthquake activity goes, there's a number of them. One, two, three, four, five, you know, probably a good 10 or so in the last 24 hours. USGS should get to that tomorrow, uh, or well, excuse me, on Monday, tomorrow Sunday. So I'm not trying to cut the sh weekend short here, uh, but they should get to that Monday uh, once they're into the office. For the most part, during the weekends and after hours, they have a preliminary magnitude set to probably about 2.5 and above. Anything that happens under that will not even show up on the all magnitudes map here. So that's that's the way it's been for uh, many, many years. Unless they're having a decent swarm, then it seems like they uh, will adjust it to uh, produce some of those uh, smaller magnitude quakes. But it's set on a, uh, I believe, 2.5 or 3.0 and above. And none of, the, none of those quakes there on the um, seismograph station are above that level. All right, uh, let's see here what else we got across the globe, across the world. There's that three-pointer sticking out. Uh, New Zealand, not a whole lot going on. A couple smaller quakes down along the Kermadec Trench and the Tonga Trench. Pretty good cluster of earthquakes there in the Crunch Zone. Indonesia area, Philippines, heading up towards Taiwan a little bit. Nothing on the Nankai Trough yet. We do have another earthquake on the Japan or off the Japan region into the Curl Camp Chatka. There's a 4.5. USGS not reporting on that quake, but it's uh, being reported by the EMSC. The rest of the world here looks awfully quiet. The Atlantic Ocean, not a whole lot going on. Pretty good swarm here. Um, let's see some four stirring up in this area right about here around the... Uh, looks like that's the uh, Ecuador area, Peru region. Uh, Ecuador area, a couple fours, but it looks like there's actually a little bit more earthquake activity stirring up there. Uh, USGS reporting a, a decent amount, but there may be a little bit more in that region. 
that uh, definitely showing some signs of uh, maybe some like some foreshock activity there. All right, uh, let's check out space weather activity real quick on this Saturday night. Hope everyone's playing it safe out there. I'm, of course, staying inside and, uh, uh, yeah, best bet is <laughs> stay inside. I know I used to be one that would love to go out and, uh, you know, have a little party out in the town, stuff like that. But that's just, I don't know, not anymore. Um, this here is a, uh, looks like some prominence eruptions there blasting off from the northern section of the sun uh, sunspots over here look like they're starting to light up on the western limb notice uh, a number of sunspots that's actually the that big sunspot 4079 that's now lo no longer visible uh, at least for the most part it's no longer visible there's there's a magnetogram image but we're seeing this area right here and it looks as though now that it's out of sight just about out of sight out of mind it's starting to grow and produce some stronger flaring out there go figure it's been out here the entire week and it just sat there looking massive and um, really didn't do anything it just massive coverage area no strong flares but now it's starting to act up a little bit way out there but that's going to be uh, back on the far side of the sun here soon and we're left with well as you can see not a whole lot maybe this area back here looks like a little bit of complexity growing within that structure but uh, I don't have my hopes up for anything right now the flare threat will drop uh, right now it's a five percent chance for X flare I'd, maybe from that spot over here but uh, 40 percent for M flare uh, far as severe weather goes not a whole lot just a marginal risk out here by the way, the Aurora's out there, not a whole lot there in the, in the uh, Aurora department. This time last year, though, seen a spectacular solar storm uh, with bright Auroras being reported down here. I've seen them for myself uh, in the Northern California. They were, in fact, even visible down in Southern California and parts of Mexico as well. So that doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it's pretty neat. That is a, uh, a big difference, though, from tonight and the next couple of nights forecast here. Not a whole lot of the Auroras in the forecast. All right, Storm Prediction Center, as I mentioned, pretty quiet across the board. No major severe weather threats coming up for now. Um, here across California, we've got a little system coming in. Going to bring maybe a little bit of rain, but I, I'm right there in that little circle where there's no green, right? That's called a rain shadow. And, man, for a weather guy, that's like the worst nightmare. I, we get rain now here we do but it, when it comes from the north and northwest like that it creates this rain shadow due to the coast range and the mountains up north and uh it's uh, who knows if we'll get anything not really expecting much but i will take the cooler temperatures that's for sure because after that i believe uh well, it looks like we might have another clipper system up north i wouldn't mind some uh, i wouldn't mind a nice cool may month that, that would be awesome All right, uh, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on across there for now, but keep an eye on the Cascadia. We do have elevated trimmer, and you know, over the past week here with that elevated trimmer, uh, some surface strain signs. Got a 2.0 right there across the Cascadia. A lot here in Northern California. A lot of surface fractures up here across Western Washington. We're seeing that down here across Northern California and well inland. You know, one may think, you know. The activity here across the mountains in Northern California have nothing to do with the Cascadia. In fact, it couldn't be more wrong because the strain out here can warp the land, right? It's kind of bend bending this area of the North American plate down as the Juan de Fuca plate subducts here in this general fashion on the right, to the right underneath this area. And that acts as a bend. It's kind of a bending effect, and that can have um, consequences for areas up here uh, at the surface level. And that's what we see. And we've seen a lot recently here is these surface quakes all over the place. And uh, with the trimmer activity, I strongly believe that uh, the more trimmer activity we're seeing uh, and during that time period is when we should be watching the Cascadia closely because of the dynamics here. The, the plates are on the move. The subduction is happening. Uh, the strain has not released. This is just trimmer activity occurring down dip, downstream. 
uh, about 40 kilometers or so underneath this area. And when that happens, this area here, the locked area, gains more strain. So we'll watch that. Hopefully that doesn't go, but uh, you never know. 325 years ago was when the last one happened out there. Have a good evening, folks. Saturday night. Play it safe. I'm just about ready to call it a night here, I think. We'll catch you guys out here in the morning sometime. Have a good one.